Well, everyone, uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. And welcome to this uh, CHRA housing update and presentation of our 2020 National Awards sponsored by Yardi Canada. Um, we'll commence with the national overview presentation in a few minutes. Uh, but first, we wanted to start this event on a high note. Uh, and first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Jeff Morrison. I'm Executive Director of CHRA, the Canadian Housing and Renewal Association. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. So there's obviously no question that this has been a difficult year for everyone. So that's why today we wanted to share with you some inspiration through the presentation of our 2020 National Award recipients. Now, of course, we would have been much happier presenting these awards in person at our National Congress, which was scheduled for September, or excuse me, for Saskatoon in April. Um, but like so many other things in this crazy year, that unfortunately could not happen. Um, however, we're very pleased today to be able to present our four national awards virtually and share with you the exploits and the efforts of four outstanding organizations and individuals. Les prix nationaux de la CRU, de la CRU récompensent les organisations et les personnes qui ont dirigé et continuent de mener les changements positifs importants dans le secteur de logement abordable. En honneur ces organisations et individus, qui sont des chefs de file dans notre secteur et qui nous font preuve d'excellence dans tout ce qu'ils font, la CRU est en mesure de promouvoir et de mettre en valeur les personnes et les organisations qui naviguent dans, le, dans ce passage changeant avec détermination et de l'impact. So CHRA is very pleased to once again be joined uh, by Yardi Canada to present today's awards. Um, for many years, Yardi has stood out for its commitment to excellence, which is why CHRA is so proud to partner with Yardi in honoring the best and brightest in our sector. So, un, un très grand merci à Yardi Canada, notre commanditaire officiel de la remise des prix uh, cette année. So, to present our first award, which is the CHRA Community Builder Award, and to bring greetings, I'm pleased to welcome Peter Altabelli. Uh, Vice President of Sales and General Manager of Canadian Operations for Yardi. Uh, good afternoon, Peter. How are you? How are things at hello, Yardi? Jeff. Hello, hi, Jeff. Very good. Very good. It's um, and hello, everyone. It's one of these things where we're all working from uh, remote offices and home. I've been in home now since the middle of March, and it's I think the first time in almost 25 years I've spent this much time at home without traveling and having dinner with my family. So there are some absolute benefits to uh, working from home and. And although we find ourselves in a precarious uh, situation with uh, this pandemic, I do enjoy my 30-second uh, commute versus my 90-minute commute to work each day. And it's great to be able to spend time with family and enjoy dinner every evening. Um, you know, over the last six months, as we've been, been pushing through this, you, you learn a lot about people and about organizations. And in April, we were really faced with everyone moving from home and what did this mean, mean in terms of our sponsorships with conferences and were they going to continue or not continue and how was that going to unfold as the year went by and as everyone can see now we're all doing this virtually and remotely and it's fantastic and i wanted just to express that from yardi's perspective and the chra it is so important that we continue our involvement to continue our support both by time and financially to the organization, because by supporting this organization, it supports all of you. And in a very, very small way, um, it's our ability to, to help everyone do what they do. Because of COVID, you know, affordable and social housing and the needs uh, are, are, are coming to the forefront even more now than ever before. And in a very small way, we want to be able to contribute and contribute back. And without CHRA, um, I don't think Canada would be in the same spot it is today uh, with all of your efforts and all of your members' efforts. Jeff, um, Jeff this is a fantastic organization. You do so well in, in, in servicing all, all of all Canadians. So thank you for everything you do. So I'm pleased to introduce our first award, the CHRA Community Builder Award. This award recognizes an individual, a business, or an organization that has had a major impact at the community level in promoting affordable housing and or preventing and ending homelessness. 
This year's recipient is an organization that has only, was only founded in 2009, but has already had a major impact in addressing key issues in rural communities at, a local, at local levels. First, in its home province of Alberta, but increasingly throughout Canada. One of, this, one of the organization's hallmark programs is the Sustainable Housing Initiative, which develops long-term sustainable plans for rural communities to address their homeless housing and homeless needs. This work has been assigned, or sorry, this work has been assisted by the development of a step-by-step -step guide to developing affordable housing, a written guide that is being used by, by a growing number of rural communities throughout Canada. The organization built on its efforts by launching in 2017 its step-by-step -step guide to estimating rural homelessness, a landmark guide to addressing data gaps in rural homelessness. It is my pleasure to announce that the CHRA Community Builder Award is presented to the Alberta Rural Development Network. Please watch this video. I'd like to welcome Deanne Bernard, Executive Director with the Alberta Rural Development Network to accept the CHRA Community Builder Award. Diane, uh, Deanne. Sorry, Deanne, you're on, you're on mute. Uh, could you unmute? Nope. Okay, so unfortunately, it looks like we're just having an issue with the sound uh, with ARDM, but we will uh, hopefully, Deanne, we can come back to you and uh, we'll be able to hear your uh, your remarks. Um, let me know when that's um, but thank you, uh, thank you, Peter, and and congratulations Welcome. to the Alberta Rural Development Network. And and uh, Deanne, we will we will come back to you shortly. Oh, uh, can I you guys hear us now? We can hear you. Yes. Oh. Sorry for that. <laughs> So thank you, Peter. On behalf of the board and staff of the Alberta Rural Development Network, 
we are honored to receive the CHRA Community Builder Award to be recognized at the national level by a prestigious organization like CHRA is truly humbling. I am especially proud of ARDN staff members who saw the need to find ways to effectively and efficiently build affordable housing in small communities and who saw the need to find ways to collect important data on rural homelessness. Building affordable housing from scratch can be a daunting process, especially for a small community. ARDN's free guide published with support from CMHC and available in both official languages breaks it down into manageable steps. The longer we worked with Canada's smaller communities, the more we heard a common concern. Rural individuals are struggling to access housing, yet there is no hard data to support this. Without data on homelessness in Canada's smaller communities, how can we know how to allocate resources? And how can we ever end homelessness? This spurred us to create ARDN's free guide, published with support from ESDC and available in English and French, to give small communities information on how to collect the data they need. To the CHRA Awards Committee, the Board of Directors, to Jeff Morrison and all the staff at CHRA, I extend our deepest gratitude that you selected ARDN to receive this award. Thank you very much. Félicitations à vous, ARDN. Congratulations to ARDN uh, on your award. And thank you, Peter and Yardi, especially Peter, for your kind words. So our next award is the Rooftops Canada International Award. And so here to present the international award is the executive director of Rooftops Canada, Mr. Barry Pinsky. Barry, over to you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, Rooftops Canada, a Brie International, is proud to sponsor this award, especially because we're celebrating our 35th anniversary in 2020. Not the year we hoped for, but nonetheless. This award is presented to a CHRA member who actively and consistently supports Rooftops Canada's international development work. This year's recipient is a wonderful example of that support. This organization's support for our work started in 2009 with its participation in a project funded by the Canadian International Development Agency in South Africa. Through the project, this organization shared its experiences in social housing and social services with MES, a social services agency in Johannesburg's inner city, and its related social housing company, Madula Moho Housing Association. The project focused on assisting these South African organizations with strategic planning, governance, and organizational development. Staff from this organization volunteered their time to work in South Africa, and it has hosted many South African social housing representatives in Toronto. It is my pleasure to announce that the recipient of the CHRA Rooftops Canada International Award is Woodgreen Community Services, located in Toronto. Please watch this short video.
I'd like to introduce Ann Babcock, President and CEO with Wood Green Community Services, to accept the Rooftops Canada International Award. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Barry and CHRA, for this fantastic honor. Uh, Woodgreen was very fortunate to have had the tremendous opportunity to work so closely with rooftops and the agency MES and Medulla Moho Housing in Johannesburg. Our staff learned so much through these learning exchanges, and we were also fortunate to host many delegations from South Africa. These experiences have enriched our mutual work substantially, and I encourage everyone to support the great work of Rooftops International. And once again, on behalf of Woodgreen and all our staff and board, let me thank Barry Pinsky of Rooftops and CHRA for this honor today. Thank you so much. Let's see, you can see the thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Anne, and uh, congratulations to uh, to Woodgreen, and thank you, Barry, uh, for all the great work that uh, Rooftops does, and, and we'll be hearing back again from Barry in a few minutes. Um, so our next award is now the CHRA Leadership Award, which I'm very proud to present. Um, this award recognizes individuals who have significantly influenced or championed one or more of CHRA's pillars with systemic or national results. Um, and it goes without saying that this individual has devoted countless hours in Canada and internationally to promote housing for low-income and vulnerable peoples, which makes her an exemplary recipient for this award. For 12 years, this person has served as the executive director of the Center for Equality Rights and Accommodation, a not-for-profit charity that defends human uh, housing rights and human rights. Most recently, more recently, she has served as the Executive Director of Canada Without Poverty, where she has established herself as a leading expert and advocate on economic and social human rights, in particular for women. Her work in promoting social justice, particularly in respect to the right to housing, was recognized globally when, in 2014, she was appointed by the United Nations Rights Council to the position of United Rights, excuse me, United Nations Special Rapporteur on Adequate Housing. Dans ce rôle, elle a donné une voix aux populations marginalisées du monde entier dans leur lutte pour accéder à un logement sûr et abordable. Et récemment, elle a créé un nouveau mouvement international appelé Making the Shift, qui cherche à mettre fin à la financial, financialisation the logement dans le monde. Uh, most recently, this person has started a new global movement called The Shift, which aims to end the financialization of housing at a global level. Donc, je suis très fier d'annoncer que la, rep la recipiente du prix de leadership de la CRU de 2020, c'est Leilani Farah. I'm proud to announce that the recipient of the 2020 CHRA Leadership Award is Leilani Farah. Please watch this video.
So it's my pleasure to virtually present uh, the PHRA Leadership Award for 2020 to Leilani Farah. Leilani. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks to CHRA, the awards committee. I am, of course, flattered. I'm honored and slightly embarrassed to receive the leadership award. Um, I admit um, that for a long time, I felt that the work advancing the right to housing was kind of marginal or marginalized. Um, and it's been a sometimes lonely road. Um, I felt kind of, I'm a human rights person in this housing world. I know nothing about housing and housing policy. And then on the human rights side, I'm not a civil and political rights advocate. I'm a right to housing advocate, which is quite different. Um, and so it's incredibly meaningful for the work on the right to housing that I and others have been engaged in uh, to be recognized by a stalwart organization like CHRA. It's, I, I'm not sure you know how meaningful it is actually. Um, and I, I should say, however, that I can only be an effective leader if I'm working alongside brilliant minds, incredible and committed organizations and individuals. Um, and I've been lucky to do so. And CHRA is certainly one amongst them and an, a really important ally and friend. Um, and so it's super nice to have this moment to celebrate. I really thank you. And I, it, I wouldn't be me if I didn't end by saying and reminding everyone that housing is a human right governments do have obligations to implement it as such and our role is to make sure that happens so thanks so much thank you leilani merci leilani and of course uh very well deserved and uh and it's it's just a small token of what we could do to uh, pay tribute to all your work as un special rapporteur and in the work that you're continuing to do so again congratulations uh, for staff here. So uh, I'd now like to introduce uh, CHRA's board president, Mr. Kelvin Albers, CEO of McCola Group of Societies in Victoria, BC, to present today's final award. Kevin, over to you. Great, thanks very much, Jeff. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I want to start by uh, just saying a, a great uh, thank you and, and congratulations to the award recipients, uh, Alberta Rural Development Network, and uh, Wood Green uh, and Babcock and also Lilani, just uh, the fantastic work that these three organizations and the people that uh, represent them, uh, you guys have done such incredible work to advance uh, affordable housing in our country and, and beyond. So our final award is the CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award. This award celebrates an individual's lifetime achievement and outstanding contributions to the affordable housing sector in Canada and beyond. This year, the selection committee chose an individual who has made it, its, it his life's work to support people wishing to access safe and affordable housing. He is a leader with over 30 years in public service and public policy, all directly linked to affordable and social housing and homelessness. Throughout his long career, this inv individual has worked as an Ontario manager of housing operations with CMHC, worked for the Canadian Home Builders Association, and in 2000, he became the general manager of shelter support and housing administration with the city of Toronto. After joining the board of directors of, of CHRA, this individual took on the role of chair from 2012 to 2014. It was during this time that he championed the creation of the CHRA Indigenous Caucus in 2013 to serve as a distinct voice for Indigenous housing providers, a group that has grown significantly in stature and influence since that time and this individual continues to serve the caucus as a working group member. And if, if all that weren't enough, he has spent the past five years serving as the volunteer chair of York Region's Community Advisory Board on Homelessness, bringing a diverse membership together to unite and focus on preventing and ending homelessness. It is for all these reasons and many more that we are proud to announce that the 2020 CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award is presented to Mr. Phil Brown. Please uh, check out this short video on Phil.
really is my honor to welcome Phil Brown to accept the CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award. Hand it over to Phil. And unfortunately, Kevin, we've uh, learned that Phil wasn't able to log in uh, due to some technical issues. So we apologize for that. It's really unfortunate. However, uh, we are going to make sure that Phil's acceptance speech uh, is, is taped and we're going to send that around to everybody. Uh, I know Phil was very much uh, uh, honored to accept this award and uh, I know he very much thanks everyone uh, for, his, uh, for, for this honor, uh, but we will be sure to send around that acceptance speech. And again, our apologies for, the, uh, uh, for that technical glitch. Thanks, John. Well, thank you. And uh, again, congratulations to all of the CHRA award recipients. Uh, and thanks again to our award sponsor, Yardy Canada, uh, who again are such uh, fantastic supporters of this sector. Um, we will be featuring our award recipients in our next newsletter uh, on social media and in our 2020 annual report. So, encore une fois, merci et félicitations à tous. Uh, nos gagnants aujourd'hui. Now, before moving on, uh, I want to once again invite Barry Pinsky, uh, Executive Director of Rooftops Canada, to say a few words. Um, for those not familiar, uh, Rooftops, of course, is the International Development Program for Canadian Social and Cooperative Housing Organizations. Um, as Barry mentioned earlier, in 2020, Rooftops is celebrating its 35th anniversary. So Barry, uh, congratulations on this milestone anniversary, and of course for all the great work that Rooftops does around the world. Barry, over to you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, I have to say at the end of those presentations, I was really missing the opportunity to applaud <laughs> all the wonderful winners. Um, for people who don't know, we started operations uh, 35 years ago in 1985 as uh, CHF Canada's international program. Uh, but we immediately started collaborating with CHRA, uh, particularly in the two years leading up to the International Year of Shelter for the Homeless that some of us are old enough to remember in 1987, when we worked together on a national conference and a uh, international study visitor program. Uh, people came from all over the world and were hosted by social and co-op housing groups across Canada. Somewhere in the early 1990s, and we don't exactly know when, uh, we decided to formalize the relationship. Uh, it made a lot of sense uh, then, and it still makes to me a lot of sense uh, to include and work with uh, the social housing sector in our international programs. Uh, at the time, we agreed to reserve a place on the board for our board for CHRA, which over the years has been filled by some very committed and knowledgeable CHRA members, just to name a few. Uh, Martin Wexler, who was also a technical advisor for us in Lithuania, uh, Catherine Boucher, who uh, worked for us for a year in South Africa and headed up our fundraising team for a while. And most recently, Pam Hine, who participated in uh, one of our study visits to Africa and served as our president for several years before moving to CMHC. Many other CHRA members have been directly involved in, a, in our work. Uh, just to name a few that were all award winners, uh, Bob Cohen, who played a very key role in establishing uh, social housing in South Africa, Toronto Community Housing and BC Housing, and of course, Wood Green Community Services. I'm sure also Phil Brown at one point very generously uh, offered some of his time to help host South Africans at the city of Toronto. Um, CHRA itself has provided support in many different ways. Um, numerous articles and posts uh, about our work and in international development have appeared in paper and online publications over the years, uh, helping to share experiences with our experiences with CHRA members. Uh, often we had a presence at CHRA congresses uh, and in workshops. And very importantly, uh, CHRA has made annual financial contributions to our work, which are especially important when, as in most cases, we have to match Government of Canada funding. Um, another critical role has been helping us with government relations and helping us reach out to ministers and their staff at critical moments in time. Uh, at one point, CHRA helped us save a five-year program 
uh, that looked like it was going to just drift away uh, until we got some political support behind it. And uh, Jeff has just helped us do that all over again. So <laughs> thanks very much for that. As we celebrate our 35th anniversary, it's a great pleasure to present a partnership certificate to CHRA, recognizing its commitment and support for building homes and sustainable communities in the global south. There it is. Uh, this support has helped tens of thousands of low and moderate income households to secure land and housing, improve gender equality, and achieve the fundamental right to live in peace and dignity. Thanks to all CHRA members for your past support. We look forward to continuing this partnership in the future. Thanks again. There we go. <laughs> we can't hear you. There we go. Uh, first of all, Barry, thank you so much for the beautiful certificate. Um, it'll, it'll hang proudly on our walls. But uh, also, it was interesting listening to you name some of the people that have been uh, involved in rooftops over the years. And clearly, those are some of the champions uh, for the social housing sector uh, over the past number of decades. Uh, so the fact that rooftops has been so fortunate to have so many uh, leading people associated with it for years and years is really a testament to the work that you do. Uh, and of course, the housing that you provide in countries around the world, most recently South Africa, is uh, is really, again, a testament, a long-term testament to your efforts. So uh, thank you for the work you do. Uh, and again, congratulations on your on your 30, 35th year anniversary in 2020. Um, wish we could have celebrated in person, but uh, at some point soon, hopefully. I'm sure we will. Thanks again. So again, thank you to uh, all of our uh, recipients. Congratulations to our recipients this year. Uh, and again, we will be uh, showcasing these recipients in our upcoming communications over the next couple of days and weeks. Um, oh, I see we have Phil Brown on. Um, Phil, uh, we've we've done officially your uh, your presentation, but if uh, if you could, we'd we'd love to hear a couple words of uh, from you. Phil, can we turn it to you? Phil, you're, you're on mute though. You just need to unmute yourself. Okay, great. Well, thanks, uh, Jeff, and uh, thanks, Kevin. And hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, I heard uh, everything. Um, I uh, Anyway, we're here now, so that's great. Um, my congratulations to um, Anne and Leilani and Deanne for their awards. What a powerhouse of talent and, uh, and accomplishments. I think the future of housing is in uh, great shape. Um, first, I want to uh, recognize and thank you for the work that you're all doing to battle the coronavirus. Housing is always at the center of everything and I know this pandemic is no exception. It takes untold effort, dedication, innovation, and courage to tackle and ultimately um, defeat this virus. Characteristics which I know are common to CHRA members. So keep up the great work. It was February the 18th when Jeff called me to let me know about the award. He also informed me that the award was, for the first time ever, to be kept a secret until the conference in Saskatoon in April. Well, here we are, 203 days and a lifetime later. I've had the opportunity to celebrate the award in private for longer than we thought. So it is great to be able to celebrate this award with you today. Thanks to you, Jeff, and to your staff for the extra work it took to put on this first ever CHRA virtual award ceremony. Thank you to the CHRA board of directors for awarding me this honor and to the individuals who took the time to nominate me. I am honored, humbled, and thrilled all at the same time. And here it is, a beautiful piece of glassware. 
Thanks, Jeff. I've had the privilege to work with some amazing teams over the last many years. Most recently, the wonderful leaders around the table at the uh, York Region Homelessness Community Advisory Board, the small but mighty teams at the Canadian Housing and Renewal Association and the Canadian Home Builders Association, the skilled public servants at the uh, Ontario Regional Office of Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation in Toronto, and where it began for me, the south attic of that wonderful CMHC building on Montreal Road in Ottawa, working with my policy and program evaluation colleagues. A final mention to the dedicated and smart professionals at the City of Toronto, particularly those in the Shelter Support and Housing Administration Division and the Affordable Housing Office, uh, with whom I spent 12 busy and rewarding years with never a dull moment. I've had the opportunity to learn from all of you and to laugh with you all, often under trying and demanding circumstances. We were able to accomplish much together. It has been a pleasure and an experience I will never forget. To Robert Byers and the members of the CHRA Indigenous Housing Caucus, and to Indigenous colleagues I have met over the last 30 years, thank you for including me in your conversations. You have made me a better person. And let's not forget that the national housing strategy is failing the 87% of Indigenous households who do not live on reserve lands. An urban, rural and northern indigenous housing, housing strategy with new sustainable funding and a service focus is required to address their housing needs. And to support reconciliation efforts, these new investments should be delivered by indigenous housing providers who currently provide housing services off reserve for indigenous by Indigenous. I'm looking forward to seeing this major service gap addressed in the upcoming throne speech and the subsequent federal budget. This is a wise investment and long overdue. I want to thank my family who have been by my side throughout. To my two Markham boys, Adrian and Stephen, it has been a blast growing up with you. And to my wife, Gregoria, your love and support has never wavered. Muchas gracias, mi vida para todos. A quick shout out to Al Stewart, John Mayle, and David Letterman, who kept me company, and for the most part sane, through the years. And to my parents, Bill and Ella Brown, who survived World War II, and post-war rationing, and still succeeded in life, what can you say but thanks? In closing, to you all, you are the reason I stayed true to the cause. You're smart, dedicated, and passionate about what you do. You're also nice and fun people to be around. Look after each other and stay healthy and safe as we move forward. There is no obstacle we can't overcome. And to my grandchildren, Isabella, Valentina and William, this trophy is for you. We'll figure out how to play with it. Thanks. Well, thank you, Phil. And uh, we're so thrilled that we were able to get you on video and uh, and hear from you. So. Thank you, and again, Bill, congratulations on this award. Uh, truly a deserving honor. And uh, we too are, are very happy that we're finally able to announce these winners. It has been a long time, uh, but, uh, but good things come to those who wait. So again, Phil, thank you. Congratulations to you, and congratulations to uh, all of our recipients. Thanks, Kevin, um, and thank you, Jeff. 
So it's now time uh, to deliver the uh, CHRA National Housing Update. Um, the purpose of this report is really to provide our members and supporters with an opportunity to learn uh, and be updated on various national housing policy uh, policies and programs impacting upon community housing. Uh, and in addition, we're uh, going to provide a couple updates on some CHRA programs. So I will uh, go through this in about 25 minutes or so, and then leave time for questions afterwards. Uh, if you do have questions, if you could add them uh, into the chat box, and we'll take as many as we can. Um, et comme vous voyez, la présentation, les notes sont en les deux langues, en anglais et français. Uh, la plupart de mes commentaires sera en anglais, mais si vous avez des questions uh, ou des commentaires en français, s'il vous plaît, uh, faites ça dans le chat box et uh, on va répondre uh, en français. Also, before starting, I want to acknowledge that sitting here in the capital of Ottawa, uh, I, I am pla I'm very proud to be on um, uh, uh, not Assiniboine territory, but uh, Algonquin territory uh, in this area. And I thank the Algonquin people for allowing us to live, work and play uh, in this region. So as you'll see on the screen at present, uh, this is really the uh, subject matters that we intend to discuss. Uh, we'll first provide an update on some of the national housing strategy programs and policies. Uh, talk a bit about the role of the federal government with respect to the pandemic. Um, Focus on the CHRA Indigenous Caucus and its efforts, as Phil just mentioned, towards uh, achieving an urban, rural, and northern Indigenous housing strategy, uh, and then conclude with a couple updates on some various CHRA programs and initiatives. Again, if you have questions or comments at the end, uh, or even during uh, the presentation, please type them in the chat box, and, uh, and, and we'll get to as many as we can. So, so for starters, um, as all of you know, the National Housing Strategy, which was unveiled to great fanfare back in uh, November of 2017, uh, it's been in place for almost three years now. Uh, it was at the time a $40 billion program, uh, but additional programs and additional monies were added to it in the federal budgets of 2018 and 2019. Now, although the program is three years old, um, there are still a number of loose ends that need to be tied up to actually implement it fully. So for example, um, the prov all provinces and territories were required to sign a bilateral agreement to implement the uh, variety of measures. La province de Quebec, the province of Quebec has still not signed a bilateral agreement. Um, this is something that we've been calling on both the government of Quebec and the federal government to, uh, to get to as quickly as possible because we want to ensure that the benefits of the strategy are felt in Quebec, uh, whereas right now they're not. There'll be a couple other loose ends I'll talk about in the next couple slides. Um, I should also mention that as part of the strategy and as part of the right to housing legislation that accompanied the strategy, um, the federal government, and in particular CMHC, is required to provide uh, essentially a report card on the strategy and its progress in meeting its targets. Uh, it's required to do so every three years. The first such report is expected in 2021. Uh, and in fact, we'll be starting discussions with CMHC fairly soon on the metrics and the measures that will go into that report card uh, because those have not yet been determined. And those will be important because we want to ensure that the strategy is more than just words, it's more than just lip service, but that it's actually meeting housing needs and addressing homelessness. And that, and that measure, that report card, will be one way to do it. So speaking of, back one, speaking of, back one, the, there we go. Uh, as you all know, one of the key, no, no, next one. No, right there, right there, right there. there we go. Sorry, we're having <laughs> some issues here. Um, Sorry, Tom, it's still working. It's, it's on there. Okay, sorry. Hopefully you can all see the National Housing Strategy Act slide. There we go. Um, so this was the so-called right to housing legislation that was committed to as part of the strategy. Uh, it was passed by Parliament in June of 2019 uh, called the National Housing Strategy Act. Uh, it was part of the budget implementation bill uh, from June of 2019. 
Uh, now, that legislation did a number of things, amongst which it introduced or it created a couple new accountability measures. Um, one being the National Housing Council, which was to be a group of people from throughout Canada that would advise the minister on means for the federal government to achieve a right to housing framework. Um, unfortunately, that council has still not been announced. Uh, we know there was a public call for applications. There was even interviews that happened earlier this year. We have still not seen an announcement on the makeup of that, of that council. Uh, we've been asking the minister's office repeatedly when we can expect that, and we still haven't heard anything. The same goes for the other accountability measure within the legislation called the National Housing Advocate. Now, this will be an individual that will be supplemented by uh, staff that essentially will have the right uh, to investigate any grievances or any concerns with right to housing, with the catch being in a small asterisk that those grievances and those concerns need to be within federal jurisdiction. So once the advocate, uh, advocate's office is up and running, it will not have, for example, the ability to investigate municipal or provincial territorial type issues. The legislation is quite clear in that it reflects solely federal jurisdiction. But unfortunately, that advocate position has not yet been announced either. Uh, we've been told that there will be a public call for applications, uh, essentially a job hunt uh, for this advocate starting likely this month. But with so much that we've already seen with the strategy, there may be delays. So again, we're waiting and hoping to hear more about when that can happen. Um, however, when the advocate's office does open, we expect it to be fully staffed. We were told a staff of about 15 people uh, and, and that will, it will be located within the Canadian Human Rights Commission. So there will be supporting uh, resources there from a, a, a human rights perspective for the advocate and his or her staff to do the work. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, a key part of this uh, legislation is that there will be a public report uh, required and delivered to Parliament, uh, with the first one being in 2021. Next slide. So the other key program within the National Housing Strategy was the National Housing Co-Investment Fund. Um, this was the almost $14 billion fund that was kicked off in April 2018. And its purpose was to provide combinations of loans and grants to uh, community housing providers to either renew and repair existing projects or to build new affordable housing units. Um, this is a 10 year program. So we're really just uh, almost at the end, well, a little over two years into it. Uh, so there's still a long runway. There's still uh, a number of years in the program to go. Now we've uh, asked CMHC for an update. As of early August, we understand that 58 projects have been approved under the co-investment fund, uh, representing almost $2 billion worth of investment, uh, and with a total impact of about 75,000 units, that being a combination of new construction as well as renewed and repaired uh, units. Now, I'll just say, I know over this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, there was a, an, uh, some newspaper articles from British Columbia in which it was said that uh, BC had only received about $7 million in co-investment fund funding, representing about, well, less than 1% of co-investment fund funds. Um, we did a quick look. We think that number is, is slightly low. Uh, we've been able to count about 26 to $27 million uh, in, in projects being announced in BC. However, the point that BC is uh, seeing a disproportionate share of projects is accurate. And in fact, the same can be said of every region in the country with the exception of Ontario. Uh, Ontario has thus far received the lion's share of funding through co-investment, uh, led by uh, a Toronto Community Housing uh, bundled project that was announced, I believe in 2019, of uh, approximately 1.5 billion. Just a couple of weeks ago, we saw another project under uh, from Peel region that was approximately 225 million. Um, so there have been some very large uh, announcements, particularly in Ontario. We expect over the coming years that of course that will change, uh, that as other regions uh, submit applications successfully, that they too uh, will hopefully see uh, a fairer share of their funding. But it is something we're very cautious of and, and looking towards. 
Uh, and by the way, we also know that there have been significant concerns with the application process under this co-investment fund. If you're running into problems with the application procedure, please let us know. Um, we've been told uh, by CMHC that they want to hear about problems people are facing, uh, and that's the only way that they can be fixed. We know there's been some challenges, so please do keep communicating with us about the challenges you're facing. Uh, we've been able to address a couple concerns, but until we know uh, the challenges you're facing, we can't do uh, we can't do anything more. So the other uh, program that came out of the uh, national housing strategy was both the federal and community, excuse me, the Canada Community Housing Initiative. Um, these are programs that will essentially extend your rental subsidies for those providers whose operating agreements expire between 2016 and 2028. Um, under the Canada Community Housing Initiative, uh, that program is for those of you holding provincial operating agreements. The federal community housing initiative is for those of you holding federal operating agreements. Um, the next phase, the second phase of this program, phase two, uh, just kicked off last week on September 1st. It was delayed due to the pandemic, but it is now in place. Um, for those housing providers whose operating agreements do, ex do expire within that time frame, 2016 to 2028, uh, CMHC will reach out to you individually about, we're told, six months, give or take, uh, before the end of your agreement, uh, before the expiry date. Um, you will then have the option whether to uh, opt into the program or not. Thus far, we've been told that there's been approximately uh, 690 housing providers or organizations who have opted in, which is about 86%. Uh, of those who uh, who are eligible for the program, uh, and so far only a small a small number, about six percent of organizations have decided to opt out. So clearly, the vast majority of providers are accepting uh, this uh, this subsidy uh, extension. I should add, this subsidy goes until 2028 uh, for, uh, for for the rental subsidy. Beyond 2028, we don't know. And this again is something that we're continuing to discuss with CMHC as housing providers, although 2028 may seem like it's a long way out, uh, it will go by fairly quickly. And of course, for you who want to plan long-term, you need to have some assurance that federal subsidies will remain. So we're already in discussions with CMHC about providing some sort of assurance that subsidies will remain on a sustainable long-term basis. And that when 2028 hits, we're not just simply diving off a cliff. So there will be more to say on this uh, shortly. And my last comment on this is if you are uh, unsure, if you have questions about whether your organization is eligible, uh, please let us know and we can put you in touch with uh, officials from, uh, from the SCHI program. The other uh, significant program from the National Housing Strategy was the Canada Housing Benefit. Uh, this was deemed a uh, essentially a portable benefit program for qualifying individuals. Uh, it was forecast to represent about $200 a month for eligible individuals uh, for those provinces that have uh, joined the program. Uh, it was a $2 billion federal program, uh, which the provinces and territories were then asked to match by uh, 2 billion as well. Now, it's a bit strange, but to date, we're not entirely certain which provinces have actually reached an agreement with the federal government to implement uh, the, the benefit program. Um, Ontario has publicly announced uh, last December that it had reached an agreement. We understand that British Columbia and Saskatchewan have reached agreements, although neither of those was uh, made public or there was no public announcement. And we understand there's been a fourth jurisdiction but CMHC won't actually tell us which jurisdiction uh, was, uh, was included, which is somewhat strange and, and bizarre. Um, so again, this is part of our ongoing discussion with CMHC is first of all, trying to get more transparency for those agreements that have been reached, but also uh, to ensure that all those provinces and territories that have not yet reached an agreement can do so in a very timely manner, especially during this pandemic when we need money to flow through the door. 
So another program through the NHS, Reaching Home, this was essentially the new uh, federal homelessness program. Uh, it was $2.2 billion over the next 10, or excuse me, over 10 years to 2028, uh, and it replaced uh, the previous federal homelessness programs. Now, I will say, in due to the pandemic and the challenges that many jurisdictions and providers were finding in providing safe and affordable and adequate housing for homeless people, the federal government increased uh, funding under Reaching Home by $157 million a couple months ago. Um, now, in terms of the delivery of these homelessness programs, uh, the federal government has introduced more flexibility to communities, uh, to, to the CABs, uh, in order to implement it in ways that meet certain targets. So how uh, this homeless program is to be rolled out will look different community by community. Uh, so we're, again, uh, working with groups like the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness to monitor this program, and if need be, to ask for additional investment in it, especially depending on how long this pandemic goes, because we know that uh, providers are facing significant demands. Uh, another key program that we're quite proud of through the National Housing Strategy was the Community Housing Transformation Centre. Um, this was a program that CHRA, or excuse me, a, a concept that CHRA had called for for many years. It was included in the NHS, uh, and it was officially announced in April of 2019 with funding uh, provided by, by the federal government. Uh, and in fact, it moved fairly quickly to move from idea and concept to operation. Uh, within just a few short months, the center has hired its first executive director, our past chair, Stefan Corivo, um, who has quickly moved to ensure the center is up and running. In fact, by December of 2019, it had already begun to accept uh, app funding applications. Uh, and for those of you perhaps not familiar, there are three uh, streams of funding under the center. Uh, one is called the Sector Transformation Fund for sectoral impact. So in other words, projects that have a sector-wide transformational result. Same thing, but on a more local basis. And then something called the Community-Based Tenant Initiative, uh, which is meant to uh, fund projects that involve or engage with tenants. Um, and as you see on the slide, there have already been quite a number of projects that have been announced under th each of those three streams. I will say, however, that for 2020, uh, the center has uh, seen really a, uh, uh, has not seen the number of applications that it expected. And therefore, there is funding still very much available for this year. So if any of you have projects in mind that could be eligible under these three streams, go on their website, take a look at the eligibility criteria, and uh, I can say that there is definitely money uh, available. There were also a number of other research programs under the NHS. Uh, they're too lengthy to go into detail here, all of which to say that they have all launched. Uh, and on the CMHC website, there are updates. And again, there is money and funding to be had under these programs. So please visit their, cent their site and you can uh, learn more about those. One last uh, funding program I wanted to mention was the uh, new Federation of Canadian Municipalities Sustainable Affordable Housing Fund. Uh, this is a $300 million fund, which will uh, provide funding for renovations of existing housing that have a sustainable element to them, so energy efficiency, et cetera. Um, the applications just began to be accepted this spring, and we expect probably within the next few weeks that the first round of applications uh, will be announced and funding uh, will soon flow thereafter. Um, just like the Transformation Center, we're told that, the, that this funding program has been thus far undersubscribed, and so if you do have projects in mind, uh, green projects in mind, take advantage of this fund. There's money again to be had, and we would encourage you to, uh, to apply for it. So now I'd just like to switch gears for a moment and talk a little bit about the elephant in the room, of course, the pandemic which of course has been impacting all of us in, in so many different ways. Um, the federal government has responded uh, in a number of ways with respect to housing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 150 million in additional monies was made available to address homelessness, and that money has flowed through uh, the various community advisory boards uh, since then. Um, their CMHC has put in place a mortgage deferral for CMHC held mortgages. Um, and for anyone with a CMHC agreement, 
uh, CMHC has asked that evictions be banned uh, for the period of the pandemic. Now, you'll note on mortgage deferrals that there was no interest relief, and that was something that CHRA has asked for, uh, but so far CMHC has, has, really, uh, has really not uh, taken us up on that. Um, there have been a number of income supports because we know your tenants uh, are, are suffering. Uh, so whether it be the wage subsidy program, uh, CERB, et cetera, there have been a number of those supports. And there has been additional money targeted for Indigenous communities for housing and other uh, supports to address uh, the, the challenges facing various Indigenous communities. Um, although these, of course, are welcome, there are many other things that need to be done. Um, just last, well, two months ago in July, uh, CHRE released our pre-budget submission to the federal government, uh, calling on the federal government for the first time really ever to put housing at the core of a post-pandemic economic stimulus plan. Uh, we know that just about in every recession that Canada has faced for many decades, that the federal government has responded with a stimulus plan um, and various MPs and ministers have said that that will likely be the case after this pandemic uh, is, is, is mostly over. Um, so we've called on housing to be at the core of that for a number of reasons. Um, but what that would look like, we've identified four key areas. One, something I'll talk about in a moment, uh, the urban, rural, and northern indigenous housing plan that we've been advocating for for years. Um, revamping the federal lands initiative. I haven't talked about the lands piece from the, the National Housing Strategy, it was a $200 million announcement uh, whereby surplus federal lands would be transferred to affordable housing providers. Unfortunately, that program really is not taken off yet. So we've suggested it be ramped up so that the federal government could not just transfer its own land, but could acquire surplus provincial or municipal land and transfer that as well. Um, we'd like to see new funding for new construction uh, to address the supply challenges. And something relatively new uh, in terms of our asks is the uh, concept of a property acquisitions program. And, and we know this is something that, uh, in particular in British Columbia, the province has been very uh, proactive in implementing. Here in the city of Ottawa, there's been a campaign called the Hotels for Home to Homes campaign. Um, it's a concept that's been gaining traction. Uh, and it is something we know CMHC is looking closely at, and we hope that in the forthcoming speech from the throne uh, in a week or in two weeks, that there will be some hint that the federal government will move in this direction. But we know they are very seriously looking at it. So I've mentioned the Indigenous housing strategy that CHRA has been working on for, for many years in, in uh, very close uh, contact with our CHRA Indigenous Caucus, and in particular its working group. Um, this remains the missing piece from the NHS. In no way was the National Housing Strategy announced in 2017 a fait accompli. It was not a done deal. Um, the missing piece has been this urban indigenous uh, program that we've been calling for. Uh, and you'll recall in 2018, our Indigenous Caucus released its four Indigenous by Indigenous uh, vision for what that uh, strategy would look like. And this remains our top priority. Uh, in fact, when Minister Hussein, Ahmed Hussein, um, was named the minister, the new minister for housing about a year ago, within his mandate letter, that letter that the prime minister gave to him, essentially outlining his job uh, for, the coming, for the coming term, it was clearly indicated that, it was, uh, that he was being asked to develop an urban, rural, and northern indigenous strategy. So all we're saying to the federal government is, do minister what the prime minister has, has, has asked you to do. Uh, and so we're very closely working with, with him, Minister Hussein, uh, with a parliamentary committee that prior to the pandemic had agreed to hold hearings into an urban, rural, and northern indigenous strategy. Uh, and frankly, with other stakeholders, uh, there's been a long list of stakeholders who have joined us in calling for an urban, rural, northern uh, indigenous strategy. Um, so over the coming fall and, and heading into uh, early 2021, you're going to see a more much more proactive, a much more uh, a visible advocacy campaign aimed at getting the federal government to do what it committed to do with respect to this urban, rural, northern indigenous strategy. So we hope that you'll all support us uh, as, as we move forward with that. 
Uh, and in fact, the Indigenous Caucus just released uh, two weeks ago, I believe, its first ever annual report. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll take a chance to uh, to review this report. Uh, it, uh, it goes through the activities of the caucus over the past year. Uh, it's now up on our website, and so we'd all encourage you to download a copy and, and take a look at what the uh, caucus has been has been up to on a, on a more detailed level. So now I just want to uh, conclude this presentation with a couple um, uh, updates on various initiatives that we've been undertaking here at CHRA. So the first I want to uh, report on is a new initiative we launched earlier this year called the Tenant Leadership Group. Uh, we've been able to do this with funding from the Community Housing Transformation Center that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and the idea of this group is to really strengthen tenant leadership capacity in Canada. Uh, we know that tenants need to be at the tables. They need to have their voice heard uh, on various policies and programs that, that impact them. And so this program was intended to provide training and, and resources to uh, a group of tenants from across the country in order to strengthen that leadership capacity. So we uh, recently selected our group of about 25 tenant representatives. Uh, they have already now begun to meet and have begun training in such things as leadership, uh, policy development, public speaking, and of course, tenant rights, legal considerations. Uh, and, and of course, what we're finding as often happens is that they're learning from each other uh, just as much as learning from from the materials provided. Uh, so we very much look forward to uh, uh, seeing this first uh, group graduate, if you will, in the spring of next year. If we are having a face-to-face -face Congress, and I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, then they will all be there uh, at that Congress. So if you are planning to attend, if we're able to go live, then uh, hopefully you'll have the chance to meet a couple of these representatives from this tenant leadership group. We're really excited about this program. Speaking of, uh, as was mentioned earlier, and the whole reason for doing a virtual awards presentation is that, of course, our Congress 2020 in Saskatoon uh, had to be canceled due to the pandemic. Um, as you can imagine, and, and I know anyone who's, in a, who's trying to plan anything for 2021 is in this conundrum of whether, in fact, live events can happen in 2021 or not. In terms of our planning for Congress 2021, we are still uh, proceeding under the assumption that there will be a live event and that 2021 Congress is scheduled for St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador at the end of April. However, we know that this pandemic uh, may still be with us and that there may still be restrictions on large gatherings and travel. And so while we're planning for a live event, we're also planning for a virtual contingency. Um, we're going to make the decision on which way to go by the end of the year, by uh, probably just before Christmas. Um, so then that way we can launch registration in early in the new year with whichever of the two ways we go. Um, I really wish I could tell you at this point, but I don't think anyone really has uh, the crystal ball good enough or clear enough to know exactly where the pandemic will be. Um, we said that the call for proposals was issued in the coming days. In fact, it's already been issued and we're already starting to get in uh, proposals for various workshops. If you have some great ideas, please submit them. We'd love to hear it. And just for those of you wondering where we'll be at the next in the next coming years, uh, 22 Quebec City, 23 Winnipeg, 24 Fredericton, and because we did have to cancel with Saskatoon uh, in 2020, um, we're happy to say we're going back there in 2025, and we look forward to it. Um, by the way, even though we did have to cancel uh, our Congress 2020, we were so incredibly um, humbled by the fact that the vast majority of the sponsors for our 2020 uh, Congress decided to retain their support for us. And so you'll see on this slide the various sponsors who have uh, have retained their support even in uh, even in these difficult circumstances. Um, so for all of these organizations listed. I, I just want to say an incredible thank you. Um, your support will enable us at CHRA to continue our work this year, to continue speaking as loudly as we do uh, on the community housing sector's behalf. So again, uh, a huge thank you to all of these uh, all of these strong supporters of our Congress, of our Indigenous Caucus, and of CHRA in, in general. 
We're also really proud to say that the Housing Professionals Mentorship Program, which was a three-year program, has been extended. Uh, we have received additional funding to allow it to run at least two more years, but hopefully uh, longer than that. Um, since the Housing Professionals Mentorship Program, or HPMP, was started three years ago, you know, we've had about 180 people that have either been mentees or mentors um, who have come together to learn from each other. And I will say for the mentees, the, the early career professionals, I, I can't say younger because uh, they're all different ages, but for those really starting their careers in the community housing sector, you know, we receive feedback over and over that this program has helped them navigate uh, the sector. And so we're so thrilled that in fact, just today, in fact, I think right after this, web, this uh, webinar, we're going to be launching the call for applications for the next year. So watch for that. Uh, and by the way, I want to uh, congratulate the Catherine Donnelly Foundation who provided us with the funding to enable this program to continue for another two years. Um, one other uh, quick initiative that often is, is uh, that we haven't really been able to talk about is that over the, the past few months, we've been working with our member, the city of Calgary uh, and CMHC to try and facilitate information about a new joint municipal federal application procedure that Calgary and CMHC have implemented. Um, this procedure, this process that the two orders of government have put together is essentially a one-stop shop application process for a Calgary and CMHC funded programs. Um, CMHC has said that they would want to uh, expand this model to other municipalities. And I know from a housing provider's perspective, the layers of government that you have to go through for funding uh, projects is incredibly onerous. So we as well at CHRA have an interest in facilitating and replicating this kind of model to other municipalities. So in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be hosting a webinar for our municipal members uh, that where Calgary and CMHC will describe how they've been able to do this. We hope this kind of model gets replicated elsewhere because we want to make it much, much easier for you as housing providers to uh, apply to various uh, government's levels of programs. Um, I think the last item just to mention is uh, we're, we're also pleased this year that uh, our Housing on the Hill Day is still going ahead on September 29th. Obviously this year will be a virtual format. Uh, so again, breaking new ground. Um, this is a day where, again, uh, leaders from throughout the community sec housing sector will have a chance to meet with members of parliament and senators to discuss housing issues. Uh, we will be joined by Minister Ahmed Hussein, who will give his thoughts on housing policy. We'll have a very high level uh, thought leaders panel to discuss housing and as it relates in particular to the pandemic. Unfortunately, uh, registration is filled up. Uh, it went quicker than we expected, uh, but there is a wait list available. So uh, regardless though, this is going to be a great opportunity uh, to engage with a whole range of MPs and senators uh, on this day. So we look forward to it. So that's, I'm going to stop right there uh, and leave it there. I've gone a little over time. I do just want to conclude by saying this, and, and others during the award ceremony said it, um, we know this pandemic has been incredibly trying and difficult for the community housing sector. Um, I want to say an incredibly huge thank you for everything you do. Uh, we know that this has been difficult. We know that you have been having some risks uh, in dealing with this, especially with your tenants. But the fact is that um, you are doing incredible work. So on behalf of CHRA, all I can say is thank you. Um, you are saving lives. And I really, truly hope that people in Canada um, understand and value the work you do because it is absolutely necessary and incredible. So avec ça, je vais juste dire un très grand merci à vous tous. So with that, I'll just ask if there are any questions or comments uh, about anything that we've talked about or any other federal policy. I, I will just say um, we haven't gone through every single policy and program. Uh, if we did, it would uh, take uh, much longer than, than the time we have. So if ever anyone does have questions or comments about any federal or national level policy or program, please do let us know. Uh, and please do let us know about your experiences. I talked about the co-investment fund, but if you have any comments or questions about any 
uh, federal or national policy or program, um, let us know because we cannot adequately and effectively speak for the community housing sector without your input uh, or, uh, or feedback. So with that, um, it's not looking like there are any questions as of yet. So uh, hopefully I've, uh, I've answered anything that you may have. So if there are none, um, I, I'm suspecting folks wouldn't be upset if we ended uh, nine minutes early. Uh, but again, uh, please do, you have our, our Twitter, our website uh, addresses there. Um, please get in touch with myself, any of our fantastic team, um, if you have questions. And I just do want to end on that note. Um, CHRA, we're so blessed uh, to have such a stellar uh, staff team here. So I want to thank my, uh, my, my staff colleagues for all the work uh, you've been doing to help ensure that uh, uh, the community housing sector's voice is, remains strong and, and that uh, we're able to deliver service. So I don't think there are any questions. So with that, I again, congratulations. Uh, I want to say congratulations to our award winners. Merci à vous tous pour tout le beau travail. Thank you for all the work you do. We look forward to continuing to work with you and represent you. And with that, I want to wish you all a happy afternoon, happy September. Uh, un très grand merci et un bon après-midi à vous tous. Merci. Thank you very much.